Hello, in this video, I would like to give you a more up-close tour of the Christmas Village setup I did for this year, which was featured in a Christmas Village music video I put out the other week. I've worked on this setup for two months and I've grown very attached to it. I wanted to play with depth and different heights and angles to create a more interesting town. I tried to create these snow-covered hills dotted with evergreens to give the impression that if you were to go beyond the town, there would be an enchanting snow-covered countryside. I focused primarily on the exteriors and decorating the outside of the homes and the landscape. Now, my vision and town started out small, but you can see how it ended up occupying half of my living room. There are 22 and a half individual homes or stores used in this Christmas setup and we'll go through each one. So first we'll start with a sky blue terrace, followed by the red roof country home. And then we have the Babel Brook Grange, which I love this house. It was released in 2002 in the UK and not shown here, but it does come with this light up water fountain that changes different colors. Then we have the Cedar Terrace House, which is the older version of the Sky Blue Terrace House with a red roof. Here we have Berry Grove School. And for the Christmas decorations, I added this decorative Christmas tree tape on the sides. Really like that trim and I actually just might keep it there because the colors go perfectly with a school. And then above the door, I added these Christmas stickers. Then we have the Red Roof Cozy Cottage on top of one of the vintage bakeries. This is my favorite vintage bakery, released in 2003. I love this little detail of the string of Christmas cookies being hung from the Berry Grove School to the bakery and then down to the next building I have, which is the Willow Hall Conservatory. So the Willow Hall Conservatory is the same mold as the Blue Summer House. And I feel like it looks like a very official building with the gray doors and even just the architecture of it. So I turned it into a post office. We made a matching sign for it. And I think this building structure would be great for a bank or a courtroom or any other type of official building. In the back, we have more evergreens. And then nestled here in the hill of snow, we have part of the Sylvanian tree house. And this forms the one half of the 22 and a half buildings used in this setup. This hill of snow with the evergreens on either side is one of my favorite parts of this village. Next, we have the vintage schoolhouse, which also doubles as a church and it's a church in my village. Next, we have the Deluxe Celebration Home. And here's some close-ups of the decorations. I used bows and some snowman stickers, and I created a little stone path going up to the door. Above the windows are these tiny little clay trees and a snowman as a decoration. More decorative tape for trim, and then on the next part of the house, I use miniature wooden soldiers there on the balcony. Lastly, on this row, we have Bramble's Cottage. Here's a better look at the decoration of Bramble's Cottage with some red decorative tape around the pole. And then these are dollar store lights that I got, the candy canes, and they look really cute lit up. And then I used one of those craft punchers to make the white snowflake shapes and I alternated those with Santa Claus stickers and I think that's a really festive trim. And here's the house with the lights turned on. A pair of and I added a critter sleigh to decorate the top of the house as well as a Rankin Bass Rudolph figure. And then next to the house, you could see these evergreens leading up to more evergreens interspersed between the homes. 
And what I couldn't get across in my last video is this Playmobil wolf I put between the trees back there because this is gonna lead you to the countryside. Next, between the two levels, you see this chasm of snow that takes you back to the hill where we have one of the critters snowboarding. I really like the look of the different levels of trees between the homes. I think it adds a lot of depth. Here's a look from the other side. Now these evergreens that you see on either side of the hill where the critter is snowboarding, I created by cutting off these individual stems that came on one of those long garlands that you see hanging in the craft aisles. And this was from Christmas time a couple of years ago. And I felt like each stem looked like an individual evergreen. And then I have mixed in there a lot of trees that I've accumulated from the dollar store and a few trees here and there that I got at other craft stores or from the Limax collection. Now trees for miniature setups tend to be quite expensive, so I try to find thrifty ways to get them. This garland idea turned out really well to provide multiple evergreens, plus I got the whole garland for 70% off at end of season. And here you see a Playmobil caribou I added creeping in from the countryside. And regarding decorations, I like using different stickers and the decorative tape has been really useful. This house has black and white plaid bows with snowman stickers. The banners on either side of the balcony here are stickers and then I used delicate gold bead trim on the top. The decoration for the red roof tower home turned out to be one of my favorites. It doesn't come across as well in photograph or in video, but in person it looks really elegant. These decorations I added to the Babel Book Range House are another favorite of mine. These reindeer at the bottom are actually decorative buttons. This is the delicious restaurant, and I always found the burgundy color of the awning was a little too harsh of a contrast with the remainder of the building. So I added strips of glittery white craft tape to soften it up. The little cupcakes at the top of the awning add a whimsical touch. On this house, I used more paper punchers for reindeer and trees, as well as decorative tape and stickers. I love the sticker ornaments hanging in the window. There are some amazing things that collectors are doing to their buildings to make them really beautiful. But right now, I don't want to do anything to permanently change my buildings. But as I find cheaper buildings from thrift stores, I'll be more likely to experiment. Moving on to another part of town, I have the toy store and I added more decorative stickers for Christmas. On top of the toy store, I have the red roof wedding chapel with these beautiful stained glass windows. Like and I put a tree on top wrapped with lights. Next, we have the classic brown series red roof home, which uses the same mold as a red roof country home, but has the nice dark brown trim. Reminding me of houses you see in Bavaria, Germany. There's also a really nice dark red roof and rich jewel colored green doors. I really like these glittery red bows for decoration and the holly stickers on either side. I got these bows in a pack from the dollar store and almost didn't buy it because I thought they were borderline tacky because of all the glitter, but I think they look perfect here. And then I used more stickers and a Rankin Bass Santa figure on the chimney. I made this window decoration by cutting a piece of this wired greenery and then sticking on the little poinsettia stickers, uh, the three in the middle, and on either side are plastic poinsettia embellishments. Moving on to the next building, we have House of Bramble's department store. I used more button embellishments to decorate this. And I used miniature trees and more Rankin Bass figures to make it look like a storefront Christmas display. I found these wreath stickers, which I really love on the windows. 
I really like the color of the lights on this building. So I held off on buying these street lamps for the longest time. I think because I felt like the base was very clunky looking, but I actually love them for the town and I added these red velvet bows for Christmas and they just look really cool. I like how they light up like an old vintage ambered colored flame. And there are actually two settings where you could turn them to stay constantly on or you could turn it to have a flicker setting. The street lights add a lot of whimsy to the winding streets in town. This next part of town consists of the elegant town manor in purple and the yellow and pink buildings from the Grand Department Store. Now for my 22 and a half building total, I'm actually counting the whole entire Grand Department Store as one building. So the yellow and pink part of the building and the domed part of the building we'll see later is all counted as one building instead of three. For another decorative touch, I took the top of the Red Roof Chapel and I put it on top of the Fashion Boutique, which is the next building. And below the Fashion Boutique, we have the Blooming Flower Shop. Here we have the Scottish Terriers sitting on a bench. And before we get into the Christmas market in town, we'll move on to the other side of town where we have the domed Grand Department Store building, which I embellished with more stickers at the top. And then I added these metal miniature soldiers to create an older European look. And these pink flowers are accessories from my Critter collection. Everywhere you go. Now there's a tree in the Grand Hotel. One in the park as well. The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start. And the thing that will make. And in this street, you can see the parade going on in town. We got a marching band followed by a carriage. And then we have the Wadlington Duck family in their car and Critter Spectators at the rooftop. This tinsel banner here, which I have two strands of, were actually gonna be garbage. They were these bows tied around a gift bag that I received, and we were going to throw them away, but decided to save them for a festive display. The colored lights are from the dollar store and this whimsical carriage carrying Santa Claus is actually a Harry Potter Lego set. The toy poodle baby dressed as a reindeer is one of the cutest baby figures out there in my opinion and it looks really cute hanging out of the Harry Potter Lego carriage. And there are more Christmas themed babies standing on the Pegasus figures leading the carriage. I also used this Playmobil fairy tale themed carriage in my Christmas setup and it fits really nicely in the street. I took this dapper hat from my Playmobil driver and added it to my chocolate Labrador driver. Also in the parade is the vintage white wedding car driven by the Wadlington Ducks, decorated with candy cane stickers as well as a green glittery bow in the front and a Santa sticker. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Ties in every store. But the prettiest sight to see is the house. And in this street, we have the delicious restaurant and then the creamy gelato shop on top of the designer studio in purple. Now let's visit the Christmas market. The big tree in the center I got on discount a few years ago at the end of season and I wrapped it with lights. In the market we have a mini convenience shop and then I turned the soft serve ice cream stand into a shop for hot cider and cocoa. And to display the hot cocoa and cider I took the hot dog stand from the vintage food court set. Now I could have drawn my own hot cocoa and cider sign, but I decided to ask my boyfriend to make a sign for me and surprise me because I love seeing his artwork. And I used that to cover the hot dog sign. He did such a good job with the sign that I want to put it up on my refrigerator so I could look at it all the time. 
The mini shop comes with some really cute accessories with these two chocolate bars being my favorite. Now also in the Christmas market, we have the crepe shop and then we have a puppet theater, which was the TV set that I turned into a puppet theater, the sheep popcorn cart, a stand for German handmade toys and a food stand for breads and cheeses. There's also a stand to get hot stew. The toy stand has whimsical handmade wooden toys from Germany. I took this display unit from the Critter Grocery Shop and filled it with breads and cheeses. For some of the clothes in my video, I used ribbon trim I had to make a shawl-like coat for the elephant. The Timber Talk Bear saxophone player also had a ribbon for his festive scarf. I used a paper flower for a lovely Christmas hat for singer Dottie Dappledon and a white flower for our backup singer. For the hamster, I used ribbon trim and a candy cane sticker. The scarf for Reynard Fox was really fun because this is actually a cord that formed a handle for a sack of rice we bought. And I just cut the cord to a scarf size and wrapped it around his neck. I love how this delicate ribbon trim matches a Tailberry's dog dress so perfectly, and I used it as a shawl. And I added a small piece of candy cane striped ribbon under the reindeer's dress to give her a splash of Christmas cheer. I used different color Christmas lights throughout the town to give it a more realistic look. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. So that's an overall look of my Christmas village for this past year. I'm really reluctant to take it down, but I have so many ideas and it's time to move on. I wanted to make this video as a memory of what went into it, and I hope it shares some inspiration with fellow critter lovers out there. Thank you all for your interest in my channel. I really enjoy sharing the love of Sylvanian families and miniatures, and I hope you stick around for more of my creations.